Thank you very much uh, indeed, Minister. I'd now like to ask the Colombian Minister of Commerce, Industry and Tourism, Sergio diaz Granados, to come up and speak to us. He began his political career as a town councillor and has worked his way through now to be a, a, a minister, having previously, before taking up his appointment last year, been chairman of the Colombian Association of Travel Agencies. You can see some of that there. Take a little final look because the backdrop is about to change um, and we will get a presentation there as well. Minister, thank you. I would like to begin by thanking UKTA and Frexport, as well as the Colombian Embassy in the UK, for this opportunity to speak today within the framework of President Juan Manuel Santos' official visit to the United Kingdom. I would also like to thank all the business people from both the United Kingdom and Colombia who are in attendance today, given that it's you who will be building the new and solid business relationships between our two countries. This brief presentation aims to put Colombia into context in the terms of its economic performance and outlook, its promotional goals and strategies, its relationship with the UK, and its great investment opportunities. So with this in mind, I hope this presentation both interests you as well as encourage you to invest in Colombia. But first, to put things in a broader context, we are living in a moment of concern, concern of the future growth of the economy. And this past September, the IMF warned about a crisis of confidence in the developed economies, which is now coming to be in countries such as Spain, Italy, and Greece. This is a moment that requires audacity and determination. And the answer lies in the ideas of many of the classic economics thinkers of Great Britain, as well as the strategies that our government are employing in this moment, such as boosting innovation, investment, and sustainability. So we see that it's necessary to use trade as a bridge to the development of the private sector for goods and services, and to boost investment flows. More importantly, we must receive the temptation of protectionism, which will be none other than a slippery slope into global stagnation. Now, with this as a background, let's consider Colombia's economic performance and outlook to get a sense of where the country is and where it's going. First, Colombia consists of five regions, each of which offers diverse opportunities for investment from the Pacific coast to the Atlantic coast, from the mountains to the plains, a country that's the size of France and Spain combined. So you see diverse regions, diverse opportunity to invest in Colombia. And each region has become a center of development, which includes nine cities and metropolitan areas with populations of over one million inhabitants. Colombia has also diversified its economy, with the majority share going to the sector of finance, services, industry, mining, and commerce. Another point mentioning is Colombia's outstanding macroeconomic stability. And to put this in context, perhaps we should begin with the global financial crisis of 2008. This crisis neither dragged the economy down nor delayed its recovery. In fact, the Colombian global, the Colombian economy grew in 2009. This was impressive. And for the current global uncertainty, I can assure you that Colombia possesses even better macroeconomic conditions today than it did when it successfully handled the 2008 crisis. Moreover, Colombia has become an upper middle income country, and this means a growing number of consumers. Furthermore, for the past five years, Colombia has been recognized as a top reformer in the Doing Business Report of the World Bank. And this reflects the government's commitment to making Colombia a business-friendly environment. In fact, in 2006, Colombia was in position 66, and now it's at position 42. Nonetheless, by 2014, we aim to be among the top 20 countries in the Doing Business ranking. So in terms of our climate 
business climate, we are rolling back the red tape and rolling out the red carpet. As for Colombia workforce, it is among the most competitive in the region. In fact, Colombia's human resources rank fourth in Latin America for level of education and training, second for ability of skilled laborers, and first in productivity according to Price, Waterhouse, and Coopers. On this note, I should add another relevant fact, which is that the top three rating firms this year, at the beginning of the year, Fitch, Moody's, and Standard & Poor's have all given Colombia the investment grade this year, citing the country's outstanding macroeconomic and political stability. So it's no surprise that foreign direct investment in Colombia will break all previous records this year and will do so by a figure of over $13 billion, the highest in the country's history. In fact, we have received more FDI in the first six months of this year, of 2011, than we did in all of the previous year. Colombia has tripled its exports over the last 10 years. Indeed, at the culmination of this period, in 2010, Colombia became the world's number two exporter for flowers, number three for bananas, number four for coal, 12 for oil, and 14 for gold. And Colombia has diversified its economic des destinations. And does all of this foretell about Colombia's economic future? Well, according to HBC, Colombia is set to become one of the top 30 economies in the world by 2050, ahead of key players such as Switzerland or South Africa. And so the world is talking about Colombia as the next Brazil, the new start of the South, and the country to watch in the hemisphere. Or just a wonderful place to enjoy. Here is a picture of Anderson Cooper, one of the most important hosts of CNN. Although he may look a little different in this photograph, he was recently in Colombia and enjoying a volcanic bath. When he posted this picture in Twitter, asking him if I to guess where he was, the response he gave was Colombia. He was at the Volcán del Tutumo outside Cartagena. Now in the, in the next section, I would like to put Colombia in context by relating our promotional goals and strategies for the country. So let's take a look at the, our goals for export, investment, and tourism. Beginning with exports, we have set the goal of reaching close to $42.2 billion by 2014. However, we are already set to reach close to $50 million to 2011. And for the non-mining exports, we should reach around $16 billion this year on our path to the goal of $20.3 billion by 2014. In FDI, we have set the goal of reaching $13.2 billion by 2014. And as I mentioned before, and the President Santos mentioned too, we are already on track to exceed the $13 billion this year alone. As for tourism, our goal is to reach 4 million visitors annually by 2014. Earlier this month, the United Nations, the United Nations World Tourism Organization and the WTTC, it's a private organization based here in London, recognize the country's efforts in tourism, reaffirming that Colombia is definitely back on the world tourism map. And of course, our strategy includes free trade agreements. Our goal on this front is to have 13 agreements with 50 countries by 2014. Here, the green portion of this map corresponds to those agreements that will be enforced, the red to those that will have been signed, and the purple to those that will be have been initiated. This year, and for the first time in Colombia history, we have, we have had two FTAs entering into force with developed countries, this being Canada and Switzerland. In addition to this, as President Santos mentioned too, President Obama has signed into law the FTA that we have with the United States, which has given Colombia the opportunity to be one of the 70 countries to enjoy such a partnership. And what about Colombia FTA with the European Union? Well, with the recent approval by the European Union Commission and the proceedings pending before the European Union Council, it's estimated that the agreement could be signed and officially submitted 
to Parliament in the second quarter of 2012. Looking east, Colombia has made great, pro great progress. We now have a bilateral investment treaty with China and India, and we have signed one with Japan. In addition to this, our FTA negotiation with South Korea will soon be coming to a successful conclusion. And as for Japan, we are starting the process for economic partnership agreement, and this will begin the next week. Our strategy also includes the signing of international investment agreements, but our goal on this front is to have a network of BITs, bilateral investment treaties. In fact, our government has recently signed the bill for the bilateral investment treaty with the UK. Now, moving on the current Colombia-UK relationship, I should start by saying that there is much potential for growth. And we hope with this memorandum of understanding signing today between UKTI and ProExport will help with that. But just before doing so, let's take a quick look at Colombia's trade with the European Union, which has been on the rise over the past decade. Exports to the European Union have grown 380% over the last decade. As for the UK, specifically, bilateral trade has also been on the rise over the past decade. In the period of January to August 2011, for example, exports increased 110% over the same period in 2010. And we still have room to grow. Colombia's exports to the UK have centered on coal and bananas which together accounts for the 72% of the total. As for UK exports to Colombia, these have been primarily represented by machinery and equipment and basic chemicals at 73% of the total. Colombia ha also has new sectors with good potential in the UK market. This includes such areas as auto parts, apparels, precious metals, and the list goes on. And the UK, of course, has much room to grow in its exports to Colombia. Here we see that UK ranks 18 behind Italy and Spain. The UK can do much more in Colombia. For example, Colombia's privileged location at virtually the center of the Americas and with its access to the Pacific and the Atlantic coast makes it an ideal hub to cover the Americas. And with the FTAs we have throughout the Americas, such as we have with the United States, Canada, Mexico, and Brazil, certainly we can do it. As for UK, greenfield flows to Colombia. They have placed the UK at the country's second leading source over the past decade. The opportunities and incentives that Colombia offers, which I'll get into in a moment, should serve to maintain a positive trend to UK FDI to Colombia. But first, here are some UK companies that are already succeeding in the country. They include major players in the sector of our industry, pharmaceutical, financial, hydrocarbons, metallurgy, mining, BPO, and related services. These UK companies, along with the Colombian government and private sector, need your strong support for the Colombia-European Union Free Trade Agreement. And we believe that with such support, we will see the approval of the agreement by the summer of 2012. Before leaving this section, I should add that tourism from the UK to Colombia has increased as well. The number of UK travelers to Colombia for the period of January to September 2011 is almost double what it was for all of 2010. Now for the last section, investment opportunities in Colombia. I will approach this opportunity from three parts. The first of which is Colombia growth locomotives, President Santos, explain exactly the purpose of these road locomotives. These road locomotives consist of five sectors which have been identified as central to the growth of the Colombian economy. They are, in effect, five locomotives that drive the economy on world, and they include mining, infrastructure, innovation, housing, and agriculture. Through these five locomotives, the government goal is to increase the economy by 6% every year. In the case of mining and energy, Colombia has great potential. As I mentioned earlier, in 2010, we were number four in coal and 12 for crude oil. We also generate significant quantities of hydropower and have a great capacity for the production of biofuels. As for infrastructure, it presents both a challenge and an opportunity. 
A challenge because the lack of infrastructure affects the country's competitiveness. But at the same time, it's an opportunity because the government will be offering concessions and investing important budget resources. The President Santos mentioned around $13 billion in infrastructure for the next few years over the years to come. As for innovation, I can say that the sector will be receiving substantial support from the government. Indeed, we'll be directing 10% of mining-related royalties toward innovation. In this manner, the government will invest $1.5 billion over the next three years to improving innovation in all sectors. And there will also be substantial support for the sector of housing and agriculture. In the case of housing, the government goal is to construct one million new homes. Over the next three years, in the case of agriculture, the government goal is to utilize Colombia vast lands for the cultivation of new crops. It should be noted that our use of this available land goes harmoniously with our efforts to protect Colombia's environment. The second path of opportunity in Colombia rests in the country's productive transformation program. This program is a public-private partnership where the stakeholders, together with the government, agree on specific goals in order to develop competitive industries, promote value addition, innovation, and in turn, job creation and growth the economy. The working methodology for these sectors consists of the implementation of short, medium, and long-term initiatives found in each sector business plan. For each of one of these sectors, we have a business plan built with the private sector in order to reach the goals. The general objective of which is to remove barriers, bottlenecks, and essentially bridge the gaps in productivity. And it's worth mentioning that the Product Transformation Program has been selected as one of the most innovative governmental programs in the world by McKinsey and Company. And given this, the program has been invited to attend the Challenge of Government conference at the new School of Government at Oxford University this December. So the Productive Transformation Program aims to generate $12 billion in exports from the 12 sectors that compose it. Here, the services sector will account for $2.2 billion. The manufacturing sector will account for $8 billion. And the our industrial sector will account for $1.3 billion in 2014. This Colombian sector has been identified together with the private sector as having high potential for becoming solid players, players in the global market in the midterm. And they are in sectors we are with high growth rates, actually. Overall, the import measures here is that we have a program for working closely with the private sector, where the government is on the same page, listening to the industry and needs and offering support. So for the three paths of opportunity in Colombia, we have covered the five road locomotives and the sectors in the productive transformation program. Now we'll look at the third, some government incentives. In particular, we will look at Colombia's free trade zones. This free trade zone allow business to advance with significant fiscal incentives, such as 50%, 15% income tax, 0% in trade tariffs, and access to the local market as well as to the international markets where Colombia has FTAs. There is currently close to 11 million square meters of industry located in such free zones. And this year, we have close to 4 million square meters more that are available and ready to use. Even so, this figure will rise to around 9 million square meters by 2014. In addition to this, the majority of these free trade zones are located near to one another and close to our competitive ports on both the Pacific and the Atlantic coast. So today we have put in context, in terms of its economic performance and outlook, its promotional goals and strategies for the trade agenda, its bilateral relationship with the UK, and its great investment opportunities in Colombia. Now what remains for us is the successful passage of the FTA between Colombia and the European Union. And this will come to define our relationship in this century. To this end, as I have mentioned throughout the presentation, we are counting on the strong support of the UK government and the private sector in winning the battle of ideas in Brussels. For with this agreement, we will begin a new era of trade, a new era of investment, a new era of prosperity in both sides of the Atlantic. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much too, Minister. Um, I like the idea of us winning a battle of ideas in Brussels. It's quite a challenge for us all. Uh, but what we have to do is turn this excellent framework of engagement or possibilities into real business. That's what coffee breaks are for, and the lunch break will be, be before as well. So please back here about 10.25, and let's hope that the coffee is Colombian. Thank you. <laughs>